Hello and welcome to the OriginMD channel. This video assumes you've watched the level 1 videos for theory on how to win against the AI in a fast and consistent manner. Here are the videos of the gameplay I tested in Amalcat vs Hard AI that took around 5 minutes for the aggressive decks to overcome. A word of advice, there are no reasons to use a starter only deck if you have any set unlocked. Always use your best deck to farm faster and save your energy for the versus games. Speaking of having a solid plan and using the decks on this channel, it is not meant to be dogmatic. The decks presented here are not an internal piece of art in a gallery, that you can only admire but not improve. There are plenty of ways to make those decks more interesting, tailored to your liking, adding cards you've got from the boosters, and so on and so forth. But please, if you modify them or construct your own, always come back to having a solid plan and how well you can execute it. If you don't have a lot of cards unlocked, don't blame Bulls when you lose against Agro with your starter-only control deck, he won't be pleased. We'll go for Kaladesh Agro decks first, then Amoncat, and finally, the starter decks in the end. Now, let's show the AI how it's done. Alright, this looks like an absolutely ideal draw. Our opponent is going to play first, we're going to play out the Infantis Apprentice then the Smuggler Scoptum and then turn 3 the Veteran Motorist so I really think we've got this game in the bag the only question is really how long will our opponent delay I th really think that we don't need this mountain here We are pretty low to the ground with the hand we have right now and since we're going to play out the artifact we're going to be able to get aggressive straight away so three colors also going to attack with the mummy And has a sacred cat that has a lifelink and also a bomb. Alright, let's go for the veteran motorist. I think. Let's see, a scrap his conjure doesn't look like it will be too bad. I don't think we need another harness lightning. We can also discard, although we don't have a black source of mana alright, let's keep it here activate the smuggler scoptum it's now going to become a 4 power vehicle and we can attack for 6 let's go ahead and shuffle, I think I want to get rid of the sky sovereign since we only have 2 mana and very low cost creatures, so I think we'll be able to finish the game before we will need the Sky Sovereign. The opponent is at 12. Attacks for 3. <laughs> That's pretty bold. Also gains 1 life from the Sacred Cat. Plays out the Thresher Lizard. So, I do think we can uh, use the Harness Lightning to get rid of the Russia Lizard. This also means that we can activate the Copter with the Inventor's Apprentice. And attack for 8. which is not too bad at all use the smuggler's copter ability, why not? <laughs> alright we got a lot of veteran motorists which means that um, we'll be able to activate the copter even better and since we have got our opponent down to 5 
I don't really think anything can save him. Attacks for one, gains one life. And plays out the Grim Strider. That is going to be a 4-4. So, he's got only two blockers, which means that if we play out the veteran motorist, activate the copter, and attack with everything we have, we are definitely going to win. What's next? Let's select the piano law. Doesn't really matter since the game is already more or less over. He doesn't have any mana open. Also, all our creatures have at least two power. So this is game. Alright, we only have the land to heal in, which is not optimal. We want some of the aggressive two drops. This is a no-go as well. Mm, this can probably qualify. We do have the Voltaic Brawler into land to heal in. Let's keep this hand. Our opponent is going to go first, and it looks like our opponent has also mulligan to 6. So let's start off with the mountain. Hopefully we'll draw a forest at some point. Alright, no more plays, this is good. Let's play out the Voltaic Brawler. Alright, double cradle of the cost. And a baleful amid. Alright, two power, two toughness and three power. We still haven't got the forest. So let's look at our options. We can attack and use the energy. Or we can use the nature's way to get rid of the baleful amid. We can even use the larger than life. Doesn't look to be too bad. Let's go ahead and do this. Attack for 7. We won't be spending the energy because we might need it for our green mana sources since we have the ad hubs but no forests. For now, we just hit for 7. Alright, the Demon Crocodile is going to hit us for 3, and leech 3 life. And the Festering Mummy enters the battlefield. Another Voltaic Brawler. I think we can go for a Lanto heal in here and just attack again. Continue putting the pressure up. Let's see if he's going to chump. He is going to chump the land to heal in. And put some minus one, minus one on it. Completely ideal for us. We're going to keep it in the play. Alright, the AI has stopped going on the offensive. This is also not bad because we can go for the nature's way. This also means that we are not going to be getting other energy this way. So, might want to play out Sage of Charlie's Claim just so that we have energy to keep our healing in play and getting more on the Voltaic Brawler and playing out the green sources. So it's definitely not too optimal, but at least this way we can keep the game going. Attack again. Yes, please. Alright. Get in for 4 damage and heal life leeches some more. 
Looks like we won't be paying for the Helion, since I'm afraid that we might not draw a forest, and our opponent doesn't seem to have any other things that he can play. We get in for two. Play out the Voltaic Brawler. Right. Now has a Soul Stinger. He can also give minus two, minus two counters to our creatures. But we finally have a forest, which is nice. So I think in this case, we can just go for a Fleetwood Cruiser and go for an all-in attack. All right. All right. Mm. Only three drops. This is not going to fly. Nope. All right. This looks. This hand looks interesting. We do have our calls that we need. Turn one and turn two plays. Let's keep this hand. Blue mana from the AI. Okay. Let's go for the Bloodlust and Saita. Blue and black. And the Shadowstone Vizier. This is going to be a discard deck. We do have our third mana though, so I think it's worth it to just give haste from the Bloodlust inside them. Exert the Glory Bound Initiate and get in for 4 damage. Our opponent is not going to block, of course. And we can attack with the Crop Crusher without exerting if he's only going to have the Shadowstone Vizier on the block and he's even going to attack. Okay. Cycles one of the Drakes. Which means he is going to get in for two and draw an additional card. But it seems that the AI is stuck on mana. Alright, we now have a choice. We can either go for a Crop Captain or we can go for a Crusher. I think the uh, the most damage that we can deal is with the Crop Crusher. We can deal 4 this way. Since it has haste and can attack without the Bloodlust and Saita. So let's do it. No need to exert. Alright, this is pretty bold. The AI is going to attack us for two without leaving anything on the fence. Draws an additional card. And it looks like our opponent is going to be mana screwed. So, right now all our creatures are untapped, which means that getting a crop captain out as well as a sacred cat is probably going to be the best choice. We can then give haste to our crop captain. And we're going to attack. Let's see, how, mu how much damage do we have? We have 9 damage. 10, 11, and if we exert 12. So this is going to be a lethal. Okay, good game. We don't really have the color we need for the Blood Rage problem. So I think we can do better and this is slightly better I suppose. 
we don't have too many small drops here and we do have some extra mana what? Mado colors all the way let's play out the bitter blade warrior He has cut to take out the warrior, okay. We've got ourselves a glory bringer, but we don't have a free drop. Place out a load of the cost. Interesting. So let's play out the crocodile attack and try to pressure our opponent most likely he's just going to let the damage through and next turn we'll have the glory bringer to take out the lord attacks for two pretty aggressive Okay, he's going to use Ruben straight away. That's pretty interesting for a strategy. Let's go ahead and wipe the board, as well as deal four damage, uh, eight damage in total. This means we we'll leave our opponent at eight. Okay, no plays. have to say that's quite interesting. Let's go ahead and attack. We have four forests, which means that if he doesn't have a removal spell, we just might win the game. All right. So... We've got only one creature here, pretty much a lot of steel effects, but I want something more substantial. Nope. Let's try it one more time. No. Alright, let's try again. Hopefully we'll get another enchantment, so let's keep this hand. We have even top decked of an Expedition Envoy, so let's see what our opponent will come up with to counter interact it. Interesting, nothing yet. Hopefully we'll get a red mana source. We get in for two for now and Wait for our opponent. Interesting, we still haven't drawn another mana source. So we simply get in for two and wait. <laughs> it looks like we're both mana screwed. Let's put on the Nimbus Wings on the Expedition Envoy, anyhow. Our opponent is going to counter it, and we're going to continue getting in for two. Excellent, we do get our Clifftop Retreat, let's attack first. So, why not the Sky Hunter Skirmisher? Let's see if he has a counter spell. Yep, has a counter spell, but this is fine since we have the Flaring Flamekin. And if our opponent will have some decent creatures, we can always use the Traitorous Instinct. 3 2 Flying and Bomb. Okay. Okay. 
let's see. We can get rid of it with a twin bolt and still get in for two. Or we can develop the board a bit, and I think I favor this more. So let's see if he's going to trade. Since the opponent is already at 12, alright, doesn't decide to trade. Well, I don't know if this is the correct decision. It looks like the EZ decks from the AI are not as difficult to go up against as some other ones, like a mono white. Alright, plays out the Hieroglyphic Illumination, which means that he's going to draw two cards. So, just one mana means that we can go for the Nimbus Wings. Then we can attack. Alright. Get in for 5 and play out the Goblin Arsonist. And now, if our opponent is going to play some good creature, we can either steal it and deal lethal damage, or take it out with a reprisal. And anyway, we have enough burn spells to just close out the game anyway. Trial of Knowledge. Alright, draws three cards and then discards a card. And this just might be game. Alright, this looks interesting. Turn 2 Bronze Sable into turn 3 Stride of Harness into an Esprazor. Let's keep this hand and we're also the ones on the play. So there's a chance that we can make it work. Let's play out the Bronze Sable according to the plan. Alright, it's good that our opponent is not too aggressive at the moment. Let's go ahead and attack for two first. Then we'll play out the Strider's Harness. Hopefully we'll get one more mana so that we can play out an Espazoa attach the harness to it, otherwise we can play out the Thriving Rhino. Alright, interesting. So Nyssa, also going to Scry 2, I suppose. No, instead going to go for a 0. Well, in this case there will be no more Nissas. And we also got a forest, which is definitely good for us since we can start getting in for 5. That's why we're going to send the Bronze Sable to Nissan and 5 damage to the opponent. Our opponent is down to 13. And it's all good as long as he doesn't have lots and lots of cheap creatures on the board. Alright, interesting. And Glyph Keeper. This means that there will be a blocker. Let's see, we can even... If we use the Wild Size, this is going to be plus 2, which means that it's going to be 6 toughness. Alright, I think I'm going to return the Blurone Sable to our hand. And we can even play it out. And even leave enough for Wild Size, since our opponent is more than likely to just go ahead and block. The AI never sees it coming, which means we can use this combo trick to just deal for additional damage, leaving our opponent at 9. Alright, I think our opponent's demise is as close as ever has a cartouche of zeal. Our Esposor can't block, but 
I think the Espazor doesn't really care about it that much. I think we can return the Bronze Sable to our hand at the moment. That means that we can play out the Esp another Espazor. We can attack. We can attach the Stridus Harness to it. which will grant it haste and at least one of the Espazors will be able to get through and this will be a 2 for 1 alright, we also get to play out the Bronze Sable and then say go He is going to revive the Glyph Keeper. Let's see. Let's return Espazo to our hand. We've got plenty of creatures right now that we can attach the Stridus Harness to. We can even go for a Thriving Rhino or a Mobile Garrison. I want to try attaching the Stridus Harness to the Mobile Garrison and then back to the creature. Always wanted to do that, that is not perhaps the most efficient way to use the mana we have since we don't get to play our 3 drops, but I just wanted to check how this all works. When it's the combat phase will be over, the uh, enchantment is supposed to detach from the vehicle. All right, and since it died, this was going to happen anyway. And then we can say go. All right, has a landworm. Six four with trample, but we do have a flyer that we can attach the Stridus Harness to, and Espazo is going to hit exactly for 5 damage, which means it's game.